Hey, what's up, guys? Kool Aid here. Welcome to another episode of Killing Time with Kool Aid. Hope you enjoyed that new intro, courtesy of Oscar. It's a badass intro. It's just one of four entries I had, actually, three different people. One guy actually submitted two, and all four entries were just awesome. I can't believe how awesome they were. Um, you know, the reward for this was one station cash card for the winner, which is not that big of a reward at all for how much time it probably took these guys to make these entry intros so what I decided to do I didn't want any losers and since there were only three intros submitted or four intros submitted by three different guys I would just decided that I would give them all a station cash card again it's not it's not enough for how much effort they probably put into these but it's pretty much the most I can do and it's better than you know just giving one person a card and the other two saying eh, it's not quite good enough I'm not giving you a card because they are they're they're absolutely phenomenal um, and so what I'm gonna do is just roll with this intro for a while and then I'll eventually switch it up that way, at least they will get something for the time they put into it. <laughs> now, if uh, if 50 people had submitted intros to me, I probably couldn't have done this. But since only three guys did, yeah, they took the time. Uh, I really want to give them at least a little something uh, from me that you know as a thanks for for submitting those clips. So aside from that, this is mainly going to be sort of an update video. We do have some mail we will get to at the end. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is we is I am about to reach 9,000 subscribers. Um, very thankful for that, guys. I can't thank you enough. 8,000 to 9,000 actually took me quite a while, but that was probably due to, mostly due to my inactivity for a while, and that I wasn't doing a lot of real informative videos. I was doing the Killing Time with Kool-Aids, you know, for like three weeks straight. And, you know, I don't post them on other websites. I upload them for my, for you guys, for my current subscribers, but I don't go around, go around posting them unless they are really specific about one thing. But um, I'm hoping 10,000 subscribers do does come a little bit faster. And at 10,000, I will do something a little bit special. Don't really have anything planned for 9,000, but 10,000 I do plan on doing some station cash giveaways. I probably won't do a vlog, but I will post up some pictures in a video of maybe the family and some and some of my pets oh and just some God. stuff around the house uh, help you get to know me a little bit better uh, if you oh. want to I know some of you are curious uh, what I actually look like and the reason I don't want to do a video log is simply because I have terrible video recording uh, stuff I have my phone and it, it just doesn't work real well and um, you know, I'm, I'll be honest, I'm a little bit camera shy as well. So, so I might just post up some pictures in a video, give you kind of a uh, picture montage, uh, I guess you could call it. But anyways, that's what I had planned for 10,000 subs. Thanks a lot again, everybody. Um, you know, 9,000 subs, something a year ago I would not have believed I'd have been at. And, you know, that may not be a lot compared to some of the huge YouTubers out there. But it's pretty damn awesome if you ask me. And I, I'm really, I'm proud of it. And at the same time, I'm very, very thankful. So moving on next, I just want to talk about some of the stuff I had planned for the next month or so. Uh, a lot of people have been suggesting or asking me what I'm going to be doing for Good Gunner Polished Turd. And I have a whole bunch of stuff planned. But in the short term, I think I'm going to take a step away from the Infiltrator for a little bit. And I'm actually planning on doing one on the canister shell for you NC guys, the secondary vehicle weapon. There's a lot of uh, talk, I will say, out about this gun or this weapon right now. So I want to give my take on it. I haven't got a lot of footage yet, but that is something I plan on doing very soon. The other one that I have on deck is the... Viper for the Lightning. It has been improved greatly since the update, and I want to give out my opinion on that as well. I'm having a lot of fun getting back into a Lightning as kind of a vehicle that I think has been kind of ignored since the Harassers, uh, you know, since the Harasser made its appearance. But um, the the Viper is greatly making me enjoy the Lightning a lot more now. So I plan on doing those two probably for my next two episodes of Good Gun or Polished Turd. I think I'm going to sneak the ACX-11 in there as well for you NC guys. And then I do plan on doing the low zoom bolt action sniper rifles. I know I've had a lot of requests for those. So those four are probably going to be next in line. There's there's so much to cover. The update was so huge, uh, which is good because it's given me a lot of content that I can do. And it's made the game a lot more fun for me as well. Some other videos I plan on doing are an advanced infiltration video. I've been kind of 
slowly saving up clips for this. It's going to be about movement, combat movements, uh, ways to survive in combat. Uh, and I don't want to use generic VR clips or anything like that, and that's why it's taking me longer, and that still probably won't be ready for a couple weeks to a month, uh, but that is what I'm working on next for my infiltration or advanced infiltration series. Uh, I am working on a loadout video as well, and I know you guys like the loadout videos, and a lot of you want to see more of them, but as I, I think I said this before, I don't like doing standard normal loadouts that everybody already uses all the time. So I like doing stuff that's a little bit different, but yet still useful and still has a place in the game. So the next one I'm going to be doing is going to revolve around the max. Uh, it's going to be, I think you guys will enjoy it. I think it's going to be, it's actually a really fun loadout that I've been kind of using a lot the last few days. And I never planned on doing a loadout video for it, but I'm having so much fun with it. And it is so successful or somewhat successful <laughs> that uh, I do think I should do a loadout video on it so that'll probably be done within the next couple weeks as well and I just want everybody else to know all you TR and VS guys who've been asking me to play TR and VS more I am playing a lot more TR and VS lately uh, especially TR I've posted quite a bit of VS gameplay mostly on Infiltrator and I did a whole max video but I am playing a lot more TR now, now having a lot of fun with it. Uh, I will say the Jaguar is rapidly becoming one of my favorite weapons in the game. In fact, I'm falling in love with a lot of TR weapons. Uh, even the minigun I've been having a lot of fun with the last couple days. So what I'm basically trying to say is you can expect to see a lot more other faction gameplay coming from me real soon. So anyways, that's pretty much all I have. Time to move on to the mail. And the first question is by Kate Suggs. And this is normally a question I wouldn't answer because I'm not very qualified in the arts of flying or liberators. But she wants to know which is better, the Dalton or Zephyr. I personally like the Zephyr better because I like to kill infantry. But the Dalton is what I think most really good liberators put on their... Liberator pilots put on their bottom, and that's because they can shoot sight or shoot enemy ESFs out of the air. Uh, I'm not skilled enough to do that. And whenever I gun a Dalton, I mainly just get frustrated because I never kill anything, and my my pilot expects me to shoot all these ESFs out of the air, and I'm horrible at it. But I I honestly get in the Liberator maybe maybe once every two weeks, so I don't want to punish myself too much for that. But uh, I do like the Zephyr better. But that's really just kind of a depends what you're doing type of uh, type of question. Next, Jacob Wagoner wants to know what kind of guns do you have in real life, and I don't have a whole lot of guns, uh, not as many as I'd like. If it was up to me, if I had the money, I'd probably have about 50 guns. But uh, I know that might seem a little excessive. But uh, I do have for handguns, I have a Glock 19 9 millimeter and a Ruger GP100 357 Magnum. Those are the only two handguns I have. Uh, and then for rifles, I have a Mosin Nagant, uh, which is kind of a classic, something everybody should own. They're so cheap. Um, they're, ju they're just a lot of fun for how much they cost. A Remington 870 12-gauge, probably my favorite gun. And then my prized possession is a Model 1887 12-gauge, lever-action 12-gauge, similar to what you've seen in Terminator 2, where he's riding around and he's flipping that flipping that shotgun around. Uh, it's pretty much the exact same gun. I actually think that is the... Um, I can't remember the name of the model. But anyway, next I have a Ruger 1022, and that is also a gun I think everybody that's in the guns should own. It's probably one of the, the funnest guns out there, especially for the price, yeah, especially when you get the 25-round magazines for it, and 22 ammo is so cheap. It's just a lot of fun to shoot. Um, I think that's all I have. I don't have a lot of guns. Uh, next in line for me is either going to be an AK, an AR, or I might just go small and get another uh, 22 handgun, an SR-22 or a Walther P-22, something like that. But those are the guns that I currently own. Next, Ivan Barishnikov wants to know, do you think the PS2 community would be bigger or smaller if the Mac suit was removed from the game? I honestly think it would have no drastic effect whatsoever. May, if anything, it might weed out a few people, might make it a little bit smaller just because there are probably some people out there that play this game solely to run around on a max suit. I don't think if they remove the max that all of a sudden uh, people would start flocking to the game or anything like that. I don't really think it would have too much of a, a drastic effect one way or another. 
Dogman101 has a couple questions, but I'm only going to answer one because I really don't have an answer to the other ones. But he wants to know how long have you played Planet Side 2? And my guess is 850 hours. At the time that he actually submitted this question, it was probably fairly close. I'm at 909 hours played, which is probably more than I have ever played a single other first person shooter. There's never been any one FPS that I have played for years and years. Um, you know, I started off, believe it or not, when I started off playing a lot of multiplayer first person shooters, it was Call of Duty, and I just switched year to year to the new one, and then I switched to Battlefield Bad Company 2, um, played that, but it was more towards the second half that that game was out until Battlefield 3 came out, and then Battlefield 3 is probably the game that I played most as far as first, first person shooters besides Planet Side 2, and I do have less than 900 hours on Battlefield 3, so that's that's what I have. 909 hours. Uh, it's when you consider the t <coughs> excuse me, when you consider the time that I've actually spent making videos for Planet Side 2, uh, you're probably going to double that as far as how much time I've committed to the game. At least double that, I would say. So, yeah, 909 hours. Next, You Shall Rise has a couple of questions. He says, Do you think it is worth putting certs into a variety of classes so that you have half decent class for every situation? Or should I just focus on putting certs into one class at a time? It really depends on you personally, but I would definitely suggest um, at some point or other picking up some of the more important items for each class. For instance, uh, C4 for the light assault to me is a must. Tank mines for the engineer class. Uh, max rank of n nano app, the medical applicator for the medic. Certain things like that are a must for each class. Uh, but you could just focus on one class. Um, your your main class that you play all the time, as far as trying to maybe max out your uh, certain suit slot or max out a weapon, things like that. But there are definitely aspects for each class that you are going to want to have if you want to really, you know, maximize your potential on the battlefield. He also wants to know if he should use one empire and stick with him or if he should use a variety. And that is 100% up to you. I mean, it's, it's completely what do you want to do. Just remember that... Uh, you know, you're going to have to work on certing up them other factions. Now, one thing that I do that allows me to play other factions really easily is have the premium membership. So I can log in every day, collect a free 48 certs for all of my factions, and pretty much deck out my other factions without ever even having to play them. And that is why I have so many good or maxed out characters on other factions with only being like battle rank 10 to 20. Uh, I'm not. I don't think I'm higher than battle rank 20 on any any of my non my non main NC character. Yet I have some max or some classes completely maxed out uh, on those on those other factions. So that is a cool thing that uh, that Sony really made more possible by bumping up that that passive cert bonus. But if you don't have the premium membership, that's going to be a lot harder to do, and you're going to be forced to play those other factions to really, you know, get the certs for them. So I guess, I mean, it's completely up to you. I went off on a little uh, little tangent, little uh, uh, side, got sidetracked there a little bit, but uh, ultimately it's just up to you. And then for the last question of the day, Land456 wants to know my thoughts, what my thoughts would be on a mini elevator that could be deployed as part of a light assault tool. You know, every other class has a tool. Light assaults don't have a tool. A lot of uh, dedicated light assaults are looking for some sort of tool. And he wants to know what my thoughts would be on a mini elevator pad. And he says, I figure this could be used both to aid friendlies and possibly as a trap for enemies. Um, I actually think this is a pretty cool idea. I think it would have to really be given some thought to be implemented properly. Uh, you know, for instance, you have an elevator pad that helps you go up, but how high does it go? When does it know when to stop? There's a lot of different sized walls in this game. Is it going to go 10 feet up in the air? Is it going to go 5 feet up in the air? You know, how far? Or is it going to be a bouncing pad? You know, ones that make you bounce through the air. That would, that would be pretty fun to just be able to drop one of them, but you'd probably end up shooting over everything. So, um, yeah, an elevator bat pad would be pretty cool. Um, I don't think it would be, you know, it would have to be given a lot of thought as to how, 
uh, how it would change the battlefield. If, if your entire team can just instantly start going over the wall, that's going to possibly drastically change um, how, the way you're going to attack any sort of base in the game and the way you're going to have to defend it, and it might make it just a, you know crazy hard to actually defend the base. So I think it's a cool idea. I don't know if it would work. Um, it really have to go through some testing on the PTS and that stuff. And, uh, you know, I've heard this mentioned a few times and, uh, yeah, I mean, pretty much, I think it would be kind of hard to implement is, is the main thing. It'd be cool. It'd be fun, but whether or not it'd be realistic is a completely different, uh, different thing. So anyways, that is all the questions I'm going to do for today. Still have, uh, quite a few saved up, banked up in my inbox. Uh, if you want to send more questions to me remember to send them through private messages via YouTube do not leave them in the comment section or they probably won't ever get mentioned but uh, yeah that is all I have and again thanks to everybody who has subscribed me over the last years uh, all 9,000 almost 9,000 of you I really do appreciate it I, I am incredibly thankful for that and again thanks to the intro contest winners uh, you guys will eventually see all the intros. They are freaking amazing. I love them. And Oscar, who made me this intro, also was kind enough to make me a couple outros, which you will see now. So, as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I will talk to you all later. One, four.